Over a year ago, the Mate 60 series made headlines when it was released back in late 2023. But you probably didn't know about that. That's because instead of appearing in the tech section of the news, it showed up on the political side of the media. All because of one thing, the SOC. So one year later, besides all its controversy, has the Mate 60 series proved itself to be a worthy successor and could Huawei stay relevant beyond 2023? I've got the Mate 60 Pro here and it feels just as familiar as previous devices in the hands. With its exceptional build quality and craftsmanship, my only criticism is that the styling looks rather mundane with all those conservative curves, and it's a bit too wide for my hands. Bezels are also too huge for a flagship phone in 2023, but the combination of vibrant display and wonderful surround sound speakers make it an epic media powerhouse. The hole punch may look like a dynamic island ripoff, but it houses Huawei's good old fantastic biometric system and air gestures. However, with the US sanctions, what is it like to use Harmony OS and is the SoC anywhere good enough to handle all the stress expected for a flagship phone from 2023? Harmony OS on this device is still based on Android 12. It hasn't fully ditched all Android codes yet, so you are still able to sideload Android APKs. I have already made a video about what Huawei Life Without Google Services is like when I reviewed the Mate 40 Pro. And the app situation ever since has remained mostly the same. Unless you can completely ditch Google and apps that uses it, you will always experience limitations and glitches even with workarounds like Gbox or Gspace. The more you stay away from those apps, the more you will appreciate Harmony OS, as it is just the same robust and silky smooth operating system as it was in EMUI. All the features mentioned in previous Huawei devices can still be found here. Snappy fingerprint sensor, speedy face recognition, gesture controls, expandable folders, phone mirroring on tablets and computers and so on. Even photos erasing existed before you heard it being marketed as AI by other brands. <coughs> Samsung. <coughs> so everything is familiar and doesn't feel like a different OS on the surface, which is a good thing. The SoC is another difficult part for Huawei because it is near impossible to fabricate a competitive one without involving US technologies. The Kira 9000S Huawei comes up with is built on a 7 nanometer architecture, which was used by flagship phones in 2019. That's four years ago. When it first came out, rumor has it that it is as powerful as a 5 nanometer processor while some claimed it is as poor as a 28 nanometer processor. Using it firsthand for day-to-day -day task, the Mate 60 Pro feels just as snappy, if not snappier, than an 8 Gen 1 phone. When putting it through its paces though, the SoC does fall short under load. In the case of Asphalt 8, a pretty dated game, it has to omit the snow effect and lower the draw distance to maintain consistent frame rate. Even then, it doesn't feel as smooth compared to other 7 nanometer devices. This chip limitation also affects the camera as it does not support video capture in 8K, a common feature for 2023 flagship phones. Regardless of that, the camera is still a phenomenal photography beast. Even though Huawei has parted ways from Leica, the photo quality is still breathtakingly impressive with its clarity and saturation. It makes even the most mundane dish pop without feeling too artificial. Night photos are vibrant with superb dynamic range, 
it may bring up more light on certain areas, but the overall balance is still great. There's nothing breakthrough about the battery as it still houses a 5000 mAh of battery and only supports up to 88 watts of wire charging. However, being Huawei, I was able to get 40 hours out of it before needing to charge it from 10%. It really knows how to aggressively save battery. And charging it from almost dead to over 70% only takes about 20 minutes from the included charging brick. It's also one of the first phones to feature satellite communications before Apple, but this is only available for certain carriers in China. The Mate 60 Pro is by no means an improvement to the Mate 40 series. It is worse in terms of ultimate benchmark scores or graphically intensive gaming. It is not even that exciting or innovative due to sanctions, and they had to keep low profile on specs. However, the Mate 60 Pro is still a decent all-round performer as a flagship phone from 2023. And with even more Huawei devices being released, such as the Pura 70 and the Mate 70 series. The future of Huawei looks very certain. It will continue to cater hardcore Huawei fans, especially in regions where Google services is not as dominant.